So, you have a sci-fi movie for me? Yes, sir, I Why do. It's going to be called The on. Matrix. The Matrix? Yeah, the idea is that we're all living in a massive shared computer simulation called The Matrix. Oh, kind of like the simulation that you and I live in, where everybody except Hollywood actors have the exact same face. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> anyway, so we're going to start what? the movie with some cops trying to arrest this lady, mm. Trinity, and she's going to kick all their butts. Oh, how is she going to do that? In such a way that movies are going to try to imitate for a full decade. <laughs> I like the sound of that. But then an agent is going to chaser so it's gonna get serious mm -hmm. an agent yeah they're super fast and deadly and they can take over anybody's body oh so how come an agent didn't take over one of the cops that were in the room with trinity well we only find out that they can do that later in the movie oh so they can't use that power until we find out about it <laughs> exactly i guess that makes sense yeah so trinity's gonna manage to escape through a phone which is how you get out of the matrix so why was she in the matrix anyway uh she was keeping an eye on the main character neo i guess did she have to be in the matrix to do that not really no but this way we get to to watch her kick some butt. That does sound fun to watch. <laughs> so then we're gonna meet Neo, who's like this computer hacker guy. Oh, and what's he like? What do you mean? Like, what's his personality? <laughs> oh, no, he doesn't have one of those. Oh, he doesn't? No, the furthest we're gonna go with his character development is that at a certain point, he's gonna point at a restaurant and say he used to eat there. Oh, well, that's more than <laughs> enough character development. I thought so, too. He used to eat at a restaurant. That's relatable. And so what happens with Neo? Well, through a series of vague chat messages and clues, he ends up going to this club where Trinity mm -hmm. is. Okay. And she's gonna get give him some vague warnings that aren't super clear. She lures him to a club to tell him nothing. Basically, yeah. <laughs> kind of a waste of time. Yeah, and then the next day, some agents are gonna put a bug tracker in his stomach and then not track him with it. Wow, people are doing yeah. a lot of useless stuff. And yeah, then eventually, pretty much. this Morpheus guy is gonna talk to Neo on the phone and be like, this phone is tapped. Come meet us at the Adam Street Bridge. If the phone is tapped, doesn't that mean the agents heard all of that? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so I imagine they're waiting for him at Adam Street. Nope, they, they, they don't show up. Why not? I don't know. So they didn't use <laughs> the information from their bug tracker and they didn't act on the information from the tapped phone? Right. Correct. Very bad agents. So then Neo's gonna wake up from the Matrix inside this big gooey pod thing. Oh, those are not fun to wake up in. I should know. What? Why should you know? I got drunk and passed out at the Insectarium right in the slug exhibit. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, not a fun morning. Anyway, then this giant squid machine's gonna grab him by the neck and flush him down a tube. Why wouldn't the machine kill him? I guess it assumes he'd die after being flushed. Doesn't seem like a chance that a supercomputer would take, but okay. So then Neo is gonna meet Morpheus's crew and just learn a bunch of stuff about the Matrix. Like what? Well, he learns that the machines have these fields of millions mm -hmm. and millions of people. And they're right. kind of using our brains as a neural network for computing, you know? Oh, well that sounds way too complicated. It's not though, it's kind of like the internet. Yeah, no one's ever really gonna <laughs> use that. Nobody's gonna know what you're talking about. I feel like they'll get it though. Hey, how about we just say that the machines are using humans as batteries? Everybody understands batteries. Humans would make awful batteries and make more <laughs> sense to use cows if that's the case. Oh, okay. Cow Matrix. That's another thing. If we go with the battery thing instead of the neural network thing, then there's no reason for the machines to even make a Matrix. What? Why? Right. Well, how would they benefit from making a dream world for their batteries? Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So then let's just compromise and do my thing. <laughs> okay, well, I guess I don't have a say in the matter then. You don't. So then what happens? Well, we're basically gonna find out that Morpheus thinks that Neo is the one and he's gonna free all the humans and stuff. What made Morpheus think that Neo was the one? Unclear. Huh. And then after a bunch of training, Neo and the gang are gonna go see this lady called the Oracle. Why do they all need to go? Because I want them all to die. Oh my god. Yeah, they're gonna get betrayed by this little Italian Judas on their team. Huh? You gotta watch out for those. Little you Italian do. Judas. So pretty much everybody's gonna die except Neo and Trinity and also Morpheus is gonna get uh -huh. captured. Oh no. Yeah, so Trinity and Neo need to go back into the Matrix to save them. How do they do that? Well, they start by murdering a lot of innocent people. <laughs> what? Yeah, big old murder spree. That's not very nice of them. No, and it's kind of weird to have main characters murder innocent people, but it's gonna look awesome. Oh, well, that's okay then. And then they're gonna manage to save huh. Morpheus, but they have to get to a specific phone to escape. I guess time is of the essence if agents are after them. Definitely. So then Morpheus goes, and then Trinity's like, hey, Neo, I need to talk to you. Wait, what? <laughs> He's like, I need to tell you something. There, there's something I need to tell you. Let's talk. Let's talk for a little bit. I need to tell you something. What the hell is she doing? They need to go. Well, she wants to talk right now. I don't know what to tell you. Very strange priorities. Yeah, so then an agent shoots the phone just as she escapes, and Neo gets stranded. That is entirely Trinity's fault. Sure is. Then there's gonna be a bunch of fighting and Neo's gonna get killed. Yep. Oh my god, it's gonna be tough to wrap up the movie if Neo is dead. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Boom. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, because the power of love is gonna bring him back to life. <laughs> Wait, who's love? Trinity. She's gonna give him a little kiss. <laughs> oh, did they have a romantic thing going on? Not really, no. But he's the male lead and she's the female right, lead. That's all that it is takes. pretty romantic, actually. And so then Neo's gonna be super powerful. He's gonna make an agent explode. Wow. And that's about it. He's gonna fly away. <laughs> well, it sounds great. And 
hey, maybe everybody in the movie could wear leather. What? Why would they wear that? Leather is the coolest thing you can wear. Have you seen me? <laughs> I have. I look fantastic. It just doesn't seem like the best material to, you know, do martial arts in. <laughs> leather is tight. That's that's part of the problem, yeah. Very cool material. <laughs> anyway, so what do you think of the movie? Well, it sounds great. I think we should do it. Uh -huh. Amazing. And then we can make a couple of sequels and really elevate the whole franchise. Those are always a good idea. <laughs> So, you have a Matrix sequel for me? Yes, sir, I do. Although I did realize we kinda made the perfect standalone movie with the first one, yes. and this one's completely unnecessary. Oh, actually, our finance team said it's very necessary. <laughs> uh, well, they do call the shots. So what happens in this thing? <laughs> well, at the beginning of this one, we're finally gonna get to see Zion, where all the unplugged people live. And what's that like? It's a big cave, it literally looks like hell, and everyone <laughs> has sweaty raves in it. Oh, <laughs> cave raves are tight. Yeah, so we're just gonna have this super long scene of sweaty people grinding yep. on each other and Neo and Trinity going at it. Mm -hmm. It's gonna go on for a while. Oh yeah, how did they fall in love in the first movie again? By being the male and female <laughs> protagonist. Very romantic. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna spend like 30 minutes in Zion with just a bunch of slow-paced political and philosophical conversations. Yeah. It's gonna go on for a while. Why are we spending so much time in Zion? Well, because the audience has to understand what's at risk here. A big cave where people slowly talk about philosophy and politics <laughs> all the time. Exactly, so the stakes are pretty high here. People are not gonna want to see Zion destroyed. I kind of want to see it destroyed though. That sounds much more exciting than everything you just described. <laughs> oh, dang it. So does anything exciting happen in the movie or is it all talking? Oh, there's some exciting stuff, all right. You know how everybody loved Agent Smith in the first movie? Oh yeah, it's gonna be hard to top him as a villain. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Early. Oh, really? Yeah, see, I figure that this time, instead of Agent Smith, we can have, you know, multiple Agent Smiths. <laughs> yeah, I mean, logically more Agent Smiths should be more exciting than just one. That's smart. Oh, thank you so much. But how is it possible, though? I mean, he died in the last movie. Well, we're gonna say that in the uh, first movie when he exploded, that actually set him free, and now he can copy himself. How does that work? Unclear. Well, okay then, as long as there's more of him. <laughs> oh, there will be. Wow, 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 wow. And towards the beginning of the movie, some people from Zion are having a meeting, and Agent Smith passes by and leaves an earpiece as a message to Neo. What's the message? It's kinda like, hey, Mr. Anderson, I'm back. It's the sequel. I'm coming for you. <laughs> if he knows we're a bunch of Zion people, people are meeting, why doesn't he attack them? Well, he's kind of like playing with Neo, I guess. Isn't he a program? He is. Why would playfulness be a part of his programming? Because it'll make for a cool moment. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> oh, and speaking of cool moments, later Neo's gonna have a fight with a bunch of Smiths. It's gonna go on for a while. Can't Neo jump inside people and make them explode? Yeah, but he's not gonna. <laughs> why not? So there can be a fight scene. Oh, okay. And then at the end of the fight scene, Neo's gonna fly away. Why didn't he just fly away in the first place? So there can be a fight scene. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, and also this way we can show off our new CGI technology that does not make humans look like rubber in any way. Kinda suspicious of you to specify that unprompted. Oh, whoops. Whoopsie. So what else happens in this thing? Well, the good guys are gonna go see this French program because they uh. need to go see another program called the Keymaker. Okay, and why do they need this Keymaker guy? Because they need a key to open a door. I'm just adding stuff in to stretch this out so action can happen. Okay, gotcha. So this French guy's like a jerk, right? This is honest. He doesn't want to help, but then his wife helps when he goes to the bathroom because she's like fed up of his infidelity. These people are programs though? <laughs> they are, yeah. I guess they're programmed for couples drama. I don't know what's going on. Well, okay then. So this lady kills I don't know what's going on. she tells the other one, don't tell my husband what I did. What? Why would she do that? Well, because there's a fight scene coming up. It's right here in the script. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Nice of her to set the stage for that. And also she's like, I'm only gonna help you guys if Neo kisses mm. me like he means it. What? Yeah, this program's horny now, I guess. I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, this is getting kind of weird. So then there's a fight, and let me tell you, Neo is in no danger whatsoever. <laughs> oh, wow. The stakes are so low that I feel nothing. And then there's a big chase on a freeway with some agents and these two programs that can like turn into ghosts. Well, so what does Neo do? Well, actually just before the chase, Neo runs through a door and ends up in the mountains. Can he just step back through the doorway and be somewhat closer? Well, the thing is I had to find a way for him to not be in the chase because technically he could just grab the key maker and fly away. Oh yeah, this guy's way too powerful for sure. Yeah, he is. So then after a couple of minutes of this cool car chase, Superman swoops in and saves the day. What? Sorry, Jesus. What? Sorry, Neo. 
Neo. Oh, okay. Anyway, so eventually <laughs> Neo's gonna meet this guy named the Architect, and he built the Matrix. Oh, and what's he gonna do? Oh, he's gonna talk. He's gonna talk so much. Oh. Just talking and talking and talking and using yep. fancy words like ergo and vis a vis and concordantly. <laughs> Why does he use fancy words like that? Well, because I want everybody to know that I know those words. <laughs> it is pretty impressive. It is. So this guy is gonna reveal that Neo is actually like the sixth one, and every time they reboot the system, a new one shows up. Oh. Yeah, and then Neo has to choose between saving Zion and saving Trinity. Right, they're in love because they keep telling us they are. <laughs> exactly. So she's like falling from a building, and he flies so fast that there's a trail of like debris and cars flying behind him. If he's moving that fast, wouldn't she like explode when he reaches her? <laughs> Actually, no. Why? Because that works. So then Trinity dies, but Neo pulls a bullet out of her heart and then massages it and brings her to life. So we're just giving him like infinite power now. Oh, I'm not even done. Then in the real world, he stops sentinels with his mind. What, he can control things outside the Matrix now? Yeah, he's just, have you heard of God? He's God now. Oh, I have heard of God. Have yeah, heard but of anyway, God. taking down the sentinels in the real world did make him sleepy, so he's in a coma now. Oh, wow. And then we're gonna end on a big cliffhanger. What's the cliffhanger? Well, Neo's in a coma and he's lying right next to a guy who's being controlled by Agent Smith. What? How is that possible? <laughs> well, earlier in the movie, we have Agent Smith control a guy from Zion who's on the phone, so he gets transferred into the real world. Agent Smith can travel through phones and take over people's <laughs> flesh and blood in the real world. Exactly. How's that gonna work? Oh, I just write things down and people film them. Oh, neat. <laughs> yeah, so what do you think? Well, wait, so does anything get resolved? No, not really. I mean, the machines are making their way to Zion, but there's like a whole other movie for that. Oh, okay, yeah. This does sound like a solid part one. Right, well technically it's part two. Of course, but also absolutely not. Right, but anyway, as long as we have Keanu Reeves doing some cool stuff, I think people are gonna be happy. Oh, they will. I can't see Keanu getting much more badass than this. <laughs>So, you have a third Matrix movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. Very exciting. Extremely exciting, sir. So we're gonna start this one off with Neo quietly waiting at a train station for quite some time. What? Yeah, he's at a train station, kind of like a limbo of the mind. He's having a nice conversation with a little girl and her parents. Okay, 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 and then something exciting happens? Well, he's gonna be there for like the first 25 minutes of runtime for sure. Okay, okay, and what's the conversation okay, okay. about? Oh, well, it turns out that the little girl is a program and so are her parents. So programs can have kids now? Apparently so, and they made a deal with the French dude yeah. from the last movie to bring the little girl into the Matrix. Okay, so is there gonna be some action in this thing? <laughs> I would just, I would just love to see some action. Oh yeah, there will be some action, for sure. Okay, good. Kinda sprinkled in between all the talking. Oh my god, there's gonna be just so much talking, sir. Just so much talking, you can't even imagine. Well, I mean, if it's well-written dialogue. Oh, you know it, sir. Neo's gonna have some awesome uh. lines like, uh... Why? <laughs> and also, uh... What? Oh, you know what? That is pretty freaking good. Thanks, I know. So anyway, Trinity and Morpheus <laughs> want to get Neo out of this train station, so they go see the French dude. And how does that go? Oh, well, it's pretty tough. Along the way, they have a less exciting version of the lobby fight from the first movie. Yes. Okay. And then they go into this guy's nightclub, and he's like, tell you what, if you give me the eyes of the Oracle, I'll let Neo go. Oh, that's a big dilemma. Are they going to turn their back on the Oracle to save Neo? That's going to make for some really interesting choices. Yeah, you'd think so, but <laughs> Trinity's going to point her gun at his head and be like, yeah, we're not doing that. Oh, okay. So they finally go get Neo, and then they have to deal with the impending attack on Zion. Wow, so what does Neo do? Well, he takes off, he leaves. Oh, he does? Yeah, he's like, I feel like I need to go to the machine city, so he takes off, and Trinity goes with him. Okay, yeah, sure, you do you, Neo. But then it turns out that Bane is on their ship. Oh, from Batman? No, that guy from the last movie, you know, Agent Smith infected his mind in the real world. Oh, yeah, okay, I forgot about that. Yeah, everybody did. Kinda wish it was the Batman villain. Sorry. So wait, how did Smith manage to take control of somebody in the real world again. Uh, don't worry about it, sir. So anyway, Bane and Neo <laughs> fight and Neo it. ends up going blind. Oh, man. Yeah, but now he has, like, fire machine vision of the real world. Oh, well, okay, yeah, I mean, sure. Yeah, not gonna affect things too much, to be honest, but it's gonna look cool. <laughs> well, you know, great. Anyway, so then there's this massive battle in Zion, right? Like, thousands of sentinels show up. Okay, are there any characters in Zion that we actually care about? Oh, well, uh, Morpheus. Oh, Morpheus. Yeah, Morpheus. He's, he's on his way. Oh, he's not actually there. <laughs> no, he's on a ship that has this big EMP they need to set off, so he's on his way as fast as possible. Well, Morpheus is one of the few characters people connected with, so it'll be cool to see him pilot a ship, I guess. Oh, no, he's like a co-pilot? <laughs> oh, he is. Yet yeah, Niobe is piloting. So what's Morpheus doing? Well, he sits next to her and keeps telling her that she's doing just, you know, a great job. <laughs> so there's a massive battle in Zion just entirely filled with characters we don't really know or care about. That's right, sir. It's gonna go on for like 30 minutes. So how are these characters fighting against the Sentinels? Do they have some, uh, some cool weapons? Oh, you know it, sir. They have these big mech suits with these big old guns. And they can 
control these things remotely. <laughs> they strap a dude right into it and leave him fully exposed to damage. Oh, they do. They sure do, sir. And also when they need to reload, a kid has to roll a cart through a war zone to get to them. Wow, it feels like they didn't think those weapons through no. at all. Would have been a lot more practical to have, like, EMPs everywhere. Yep, exactly. probably. But this way we get to have a big old action scene. That's a good point, but it's going to be tough for them to survive for even, like, a minute if there are thousands of Sentinels in Zion. Actually, it's going to be super easy. <laughs> Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, instead of spreading out and covering more ground, the Sentinels kind of attack in a line, you know, so it's easier to shoot them. What? Why would they attack like that? I don't know. Fair enough. So both the humans and Sentinels are fighting in just the most impractical yes. way. That's right, and that's how we're able to extend this battle to be like 30 minutes. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> so anyway, later we catch up with Neo and Trinity, and they're flying to the Machine City. Oh, and how does that go? Well, on the way, we're going to see some, like, yellow Sentinel energy waves fly right through Neo. Yeah. Oh my god, and what's that going to do? Unclear. <laughs> but, like, what's the payoff? None. Oh, okay. So then to avoid the Sentinels, they fly None. above the clouds, and Trinity sees the sun for the very first uh. time. Wait, so if the sun is accessible, how come the machines are using humans as batteries? You know, they could have just built some tall towers, used solar power. Well, sir, originally in the first movie, the machines were supposed to use the humans as a neural network, not batteries. Oh, yeah, that makes a ton more sense. How come we didn't do that? What happened there? <laughs> you asked me to change it to batteries. Oh, yeah, I did do that, didn't I? Whoops, whoops. <laughs> so anyway, what happens next? Well, they fly back down and crash land the ship, and Trinity dies. <laughs> oh, she does. She does, sir, but not before talking for like five <laughs> minutes about love. Feels a little long. Oh, it will feel long, yeah, for sure. So what does Neo do now? Well, he strikes a deal <laughs> with the machines that if they stop attacking uh. Zion, he'll go take care of Smith in the Matrix. That's not something that the machines that control everything can handle themselves? Apparently not. Right. I mean, they've rebooted the Matrix like five times. Why not give that a go again? Right. Unclear. So Neo goes into the Matrix, and it's just full of Agent Smiths. Now, we already had Neo fight a bunch of Agent Smiths in the last movie, so how are we going to up the excitement this time around? By having him fight one Agent Smith. <laughs> oh, that sounds significantly less exciting. <laughs> but it's raining now. Oh my god, it's raining? Okay, I didn't realize that. Okay, that's going to be awesome. <laughs> it sure is, sir. And now Agent Smith can fly, so instead of the choreographed kung fu fight, it's a whole lot of air punching. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Wow. And so eventually Neo Two lets Smith take over his body and they all blow up. Very cool. Yeah, and so then Zion mm -hmm. is free and that little girl from the train station, she makes like a rainbow colored sunrise. Oh, rainbows are tight. Does she make a leprechaun too? <laughs> Does she make it? No, she doesn't. Yeah. So, so, so what do you think? Well, I think it's definitely a movie. <laughs> it, it is, sir. Although I'll be honest, it was very difficult uh, to come up with anything worthwhile to write after, you know, how good the first movie was as a standalone thing. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Pretty exhausting, to be honest. And I'm kind of scared that people aren't going to to like it very much. <laughs> Legitimate fear to have, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we should do this again sometime. What? <laughs> so the first Matrix, hands down, is probably my favorite movie ever, like of all time. I, if I think of it, like, if I take my time and think about it, it's, it's my favorite movie of all time. It's one I can watch all the time. I can watch it over and over. I can even watch The Matrix Reloaded over and over. I mean, it's fun. There's a lot of action in that one, way more than the other two. But the first one from a, a world building perspective, it's just really, really interesting and it's really, really immersive and it's just dope. It's just a dope movie. <laughs> Ryan George hit it. Like, you know, many movies, you know, for decades or have been trying to replicate what The Matrix did back in, what was that, 99? I still remember going to the theaters and seeing it. My parents took me. It was one of the first movies they took us to when we were kids that was rated R. And I loved it. I loved it. It was just, it was, it was groundbreaking. It was, it was new, it was fresh, it was something you'd never seen before. So when they did the sequel, you know, Reloaded anyway, I was really excited to see that. I actually saw that in theaters like three times. I really enjoyed it. But when you compare Reloaded and Revolutions to the first, it's like, why did we even do this? What was the point? So I'm excited to see what they are doing for the fourth one. It's going to be interesting. I'm kind of hoping that Neo and Trinity are villains or they're agents in this one, like somehow, like that would be kind of cool, like, you know, a different take on their characters and, you know, how they interact with the new characters. Now, I did hear that Yaya Abdul-Mateen is playing a young Morpheus. I don't know if there's like a time travel situation, you know, happening. I don't know. I may be wrong on that. So time will tell. We'll see. We've got some time before that comes out. But I'm excited to see what happens with that one. Tell me your thoughts on The Matrix overall. Just The Matrix trilogy, if you're excited for the fourth one. But also, like, what did you think of the first? Where were you? Did you see it in theaters? Did you see it, you know, on video? What was your experience and what did you think of it? Because I, I, I really enjoyed it and I still enjoy it. I could watch it even now and, and it's like the first time. So let's talk about it in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. You heard mine. As always, if you are subscribed to the channel, thanks so much for subscribing. I really appreciate it. You guys have been really showing out this week with the videos we've been putting out. Checking them out, commenting, liking. I'm really appreciating all the support. If you're not subscribed, go ahead. Hit that subscribe button right now. Do it today. Join the On My Mind crew. You know you want to. You've been watching me for a while. 
had somebody the, the other day say they've been watching like 30 of my videos and they're like, you know what? I think I should subscribe now. I was like, yeah, come on, <laughs> enjoy, join the crew. Welcome. So go ahead and do that right now. Now, obviously this is just a versus between Ryan and George. So we're going to do a poll, which one's your favorite of these matrix videos. So let me know on the poll that I put out later today. But before you go, check out some of our other versus reactions. We've got a number of those reactions available. We've got over a 125, 130 videos on the channel. So a lot that you can binge. Check those out. And then also check out the most recent versus reaction for Wonder Woman between Honest Trailer and Pitch Mini. A really popular one. If you guys like it? Let me know what you think. But as always, if you've seen all that, I'll see you in the comments for this one.